Welcome. In this video workshop today, I'm going to show you how you get your footage off of a video camera and onto the computer, edit the footage in some very basic steps, and then output the footage in form of a digital video file that you can use for the in-class critiques. I brought in two cameras today, the slightly older mini-DV-based uh, Panasonic camera. Uh, this one records on a mini-DV tape that looks just like this. So I'm going to show you how you can get footage off of a mini DV tape into the computer. And then one of the more recent uh, Sony HD based digital video cameras that is uh, SD card based. So this one has just a, a little chip in it like that, or uh, it can also record on an internal memory drive. So let's get started connecting the cameras to the computer. The Sony camera, actually comes with a little USB cable that you can unplug from the camera on the side and with an extension cord that allows you to plug this USB cable into your computer. You can also take out the memory card if you record it on it from the camera and then insert it into the side of your computer if you have a memory card slot. If you don't, you can also use the camera with the uh, USB extension cable, this one here, as a USB card reader and mount your footage on the desktop that way. Let's take a look at the computer screen and see how the camera shows up in your finder. Before we begin transferring files from the video camera to the computer, it's very important to have one central location to which we can save and transfer all the video files that are related to your project number one. In general, it is a good idea to start your projects with an empty folder in a location that you can easily access and then save all your video files in that location. I create an empty folder on the desktop. I name it video underscore one for my first video project and then use this location for my project files in Adobe Premiere for my media files and other project related files. I can now insert the memory card from my camera. It will show up just like uh, any other hard drive or memory card on the desktop. You can also directly connect the camera using the built-in USB cable from the camera, which will mount the camera like an external hard drive, so you can access footage that may be stored on the internal storage medium of the camera. If I double-click on the SD card, I see that there is seemingly only one file on there, which is called AVCHD, even though I'm sure that I actually recorded five or six different scenes. This file is actually a package that we can unpack in order to get to individual video files. For now, however, I would just take the whole package and drag and drop it into the folder called Video1. The download is now complete and I can double check in my video one folder that the package file has successfully downloaded onto the computer. As I mentioned before, I can open up the package by control clicking it and going to the show package contents command. This opens up another package that I can open the same way, which will finally allow me to access the individual video files, which can be found in the stream directory. I can then use any other um, video viewing applications such as the VLC media player in order to individually open these video files or uh, previewing them. For now however I will leave this folder exactly the way it is. I can eject the um, SD card and I will start the Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2015 software that we can use to import and then briefly edit and export the video files that you recorded. Adobe Premiere Pro starts with a welcome screen on which I choose to create a new project. I name the project, call it video underscore one digitize and I need to specify a location where to save this project file to. Naturally I will save it in the video one directory. This is on the desktop. Video one and 
I say choose. I also need to make sure that the scratch disks are set to the same location that I just specified because this is where eventually all the automatically generated media content and project content of the Adobe Premiere project will be saved to. Hit the OK button. This is the user interface in Adobe Premiere and I can quickly go through the windows explaining very briefly the functionality of each one of these. The project window allows you to gather all your audiovisual materials that then later on will allow you to create your final video file. This is where your digitized footage will go, still images, title files and also sequences that we'll be working with. The source window on top in the top left corner allows you to quickly preview any material that you double click in the project window. The program window gives you a visual representation or an audiovisual representation of the final sequence that is ready to be output for your final video file. And the same audiovisual files that you see in the program window will appear as a kind of a temporal sequence in the timeline window in the bottom right corner of your user interface. We also have a couple of uh, additional smaller windows, the audio VU meter indicating the audio level of your recording and also a uh, toolbar that gives you access to the most commonly used tools we will use for example the selection tool quite frequently or also the razor tool later on. So let's import our transferred video files into this project and I use a window that is called the media browser. If for whatever reason any of these windows don't show up on your user interface it is relatively easy to bring them to the foreground by going to window and then selecting the window name from the uh, drop down menu there. The media browser is a convenient tool that allows you to locate media files that you can then import into your project such as the ones that are part of the AVCHD package that we just imported a few minutes ago. I would simply go to my local drives directory, double click on Macintosh HD and now I need to navigate to my user directory and in there I need to go to the desktop which is where we downloaded the files to and on the desktop I have my video one folder. You see that in there I found the AVCHD file, double click on it and that will allow me to access the individual files that are now part of this package. I can uh, enlarge or decrease the size of this window. I can also allow the program to show me thumbnails of the individual videos or just present me with a list of all the files that are in this directory or in this package file. I am pretty sure that I would like to download and work with the 0004 file you can see here. So what I can do is I uh, mark this file and then I go to file and I say import from media browser. This will import the file that is named 0004 into my project window which you can see right here. I can conveniently switch between individual windows by using their corresponding tabs and um, now I will continue to work in the project window and make a first sequence out of this video file. As I quickly explained before, sequences are actually temporal arrangements of individual clips that make them part of your final video project that you can export from Adobe Premiere. It's very easy to create a sequence from existing material such as the video file that I just imported. But basically you take this video file, you can drag and drop it, and then uh, drag and drop it onto the new item icon at the bottom right corner of the project window. This will create a new sequence from the file that I selected and the important part is that the sequence that I just created will actually take into consideration the frame rate, the uh, frame dimensions, the pixel aspect ratios and other aspects of the source video file so I don't need to set them manually in my sequence settings window. You can now already see the video file becoming part of the program window, the final output window, becoming part of the timeline and uh, I can now decide 
if I can preview or want to preview this file in the playback button like this, which elements specifically I would like to use as part of my final project. I can also grab the playback head and I can quickly scrub through the video file like this, forwards and backwards, and I can change the zooming in and out of the video file by clicking on the scroll bar at the bottom of the window like this. So now you see I zoom way out so I can only see the clip and nothing else. Or I can zoom back in by grabbing the end or the beginning of this scroll bar and then zoom in for example as far as an individual frame that now I can control like this. So I would like to zoom out a little bit again just to see the whole video file and since we wanted to keep the uh, first video rather shorter than longer I would like to only start here for example so I can drag the beginning of my clip you see when I move the mouse to the beginning of the clip the mouse tip actually changes to a red uh, arrow with a bracket around it which allows me to change the in point of the video. You see that I don't move the clip but I just change the in point. And then play it back from here. Let's say this is enough, this is all that I would like to show. So now I can take the end of the video clip, I do the same thing, I move my mouse to the end of the clip in the sequence window, it changes to the red arrow and bracket. I can take the endpoint and move it all the way over to the right and you will see that it actually snaps to the playback head um, which will specifically set my out point for this clip. I can then also take the clip and I can move it anywhere I like of course in the timeline. So in this case maybe I would like to move it all the way to the beginning of the timeline somewhere here and it will also snap directly to this location. I can now preview the clip one more time just to make sure that I'm happy with the result. And then when I'm done trimming the clip, setting new in and out points, I can export it using the file export function in Adobe Premiere. This is very simple as well. I basically go to the file export media command in my menu and then confirm this which will open the clip in my export settings window. It's very important for this step that you actually have the sequence selected before you do that so that the actual export will take into consideration the sequence and not an individual clip or any other media element that you may not want to export. This is now an important final step in the production of your first video work where you need to specifically set the settings of the final output video that we can then present in class. I base these settings on some commonly used settings for, for example, video upload sites such as Vimeo or YouTube, which will make it hopefully easy for you guys to also reuse this video file for any possible video sharing sites that you may want to use in the future. I have a little timeline at the bottom of this window, which will allow me to further trim the video if needed. I can set individual in points by using the set in point and I can set individual out points by using the set out point function or I can just leave the clip as it is because I already very successfully set my in and out point in the sequence in um, Adobe Premiere. So let's go through the export settings on the right hand side of this window and go through the different video and audio settings that we will need to observe in the final preparation of this window. It is always best to start from the top of this window and uh, the first setting in this list is actually the format setting which allows me to set the output format and compressor of the final video. This is already the right selection with an H264 compressor. It's an MPEG-4 based uh, compression scheme which renders the image very nice at the same time keeps the file size rather low. I also need to specify an output name so by clicking on this line I can specifically say that I would like to save my final video 
in the video one directory. Again, as a reminder, this is the empty folder that we created in the beginning of this workshop. And I can type in a name for that. So I will name this final video underscore one, save. And now I can already go into my video and audio settings. So while currently the match source function is turned on, you can always uncheck or check individual settings in this list here and then be able to modify them that way. I would like to keep the width and height at the full HD resolution that my source material has. So I keep it at 1920 by 1080 pixels. If I were to choose this, I would just uncheck the little checkbox here and then type in uh, a different resolution, for example, 720p for the height, um, which would automatically scale the width to 1280 pixels. Let's change this back to my original setting. We'd also like to keep the frame rate. 29.97 is actually the standard frame rate for NTSC or um, the North American video system. The field order I would like to change from the upper field to a progressive field order. We will talk a little bit more about this in one of the next video workshops. The aspect ratio I will leave at square pixels, so this is what the source footage was shot in. The TV standard is NTSC for North America. Um, and then we have a couple of other settings here that uh, I can also just leave the way they are. The next important part is the bitrate settings section. And here, in order to create a very nice quality of the final output video, I would suggest to choose a variable bitrate, a VBR setting, with two passes. So the first pass analyzes the footage, and then the second pass will actually convert the footage to um, the standards that you set. The target bitrate should be for uh, HD format and 1080p or 1080i format around 15 to 20 megabits per second. So I would probably set the target bitrate to 15 here and then the maximum bitrate to 20. These settings are all based on some recommendations that you can find on the Vimeo or YouTube guidelines for converting your videos for an online distribution. They result in a usually very nice image quality. Let's go to the audio settings and the audio format of choice is AAC. Uh, so the audio codec should be AAC in this case. The sample rate should be 48 kilohertz or 48,000 hertz. Channels are stereo and I would like to work with a high audio quality which is also further on uh, supported by the 320 kilobits per second bitrate setting of my sound. These are the most important settings that you need to choose for the initial export of your footage. You can then go to the export button and this will start the actual exporting of the footage. It exits out of the window once it is complete with the compression and the creation of your final output file. And you can now go back to the finder and double check your video one folder to see that the actual final video has been successfully rendered into that location. On the Macintosh, you can simply select the video file, hit the spacebar on your keyboard, and that already gives you a preview of the final rendered output file. The last step you would have to take now in order to bring that file into class for your final critique of the work is to copy this video file onto your USB drive and then connect that to the presentation computer in class. Let's take a look now at the mini DV camera and how you can digitize footage from the mini DV tape and get it into the computer. I'm using a firewire cable for this purpose. Uh, it has one small connector on one side and then a larger connector on the other side. The small connector goes into the camera and you have to look a little bit to find the corresponding jack for this cable. On this camera it is on the side. I can connect the cable right here. Other cameras have this jack on the back or on the front of the camera. The other end of the cable goes into your computer and you have to double check and see which Firewire port your computer possesses. There are Firewire 400 ports that use this six pin connector. Uh, there are Firewire 800 ports that use a uh, 
FireWire 800 connector. This is actually an adapter that can be plugged directly onto the 6-pin FireWire 400 connector to allow newer computers to recognize your camera. And the newest line of computers, especially Apple computers, only support a Thunderbolt port, which has to be adapted to this FireWire standard as well. So you would need yet another adapter in order to connect your camera to these machines. I'm now in the desktop view of the MiniDV transfer part of this workshop. Before I actually start transferring any audiovisual materials from the camera onto the computer, I will start by creating an empty folder on the desktop. I title video underscore one, which will become my central save to location for all audiovisual materials and project files from Adobe Premiere Pro. I can now start my software, Adobe Premiere Pro, and just like in the last workshop where I transferred audiovisual materials from an SD card, the software also asks me in a startup menu what I would like to do first. I start with a new project. I name this project video underscore one digitize mini TV and I need to find a good save to location for this project. Go to the desktop and I now use the empty folder that I just created a minute ago and save my project file in there. I also quickly make sure that under scratch disks I have the same as project option selected for all of these scratch disk locations. In the next step Let's get your mini DV footage digitized and imported into Premiere Pro. This process is actually called logging and capturing, and there's a specific menu item that you can access from the file capture menu. The capture window actually allows you a direct connection to the camera, remote controlling some of the camera's playback functions directly from within Adobe Premiere. I can, for example, play back the tape and stop it. I can rewind it, stop it again, play it. Or I could use some of the jog shuttle functions that you can find down here for a more precise or maybe more nuanced control of the video frames. I know that I would like to start my recording somewhere around the time code of 2 minutes and 8 seconds. So I can actually directly click into the time code that Adobe Premiere takes over from the camera and specify a location on the tape that uh, is then used as the in point for my recording. It is very important setting this very first in point of your recording not too soon at the beginning of the tape. For example, it is uh, rather difficult to digitize any material that way in the first 5 to 10 seconds of your mini DV tape. I would thus recommend not to do any important recordings in this part of your tape, but rather uh, start your important recordings a half a minute or a minute into the tape to be on the safer side. I should also title the tape and the clip that I'm about to digitize so that I can easily locate or recreate some of the captures that I'm going to perform in just a minute, if need be. This is called tower clip. All right, I'm now ready to set the in point for my recording. It will actually start the recording right at two minutes and eight seconds on my tape. And so I do this by just setting the in point, clicking on the set in function in the right column of the capture window. And then play back the tape. Or fast forward to the point where I would like to set the out point here. And then either specifically determine the out point with a time code or if I am sure that this is where I would like to stop my recording, hit the set out button again on the right hand side of this window. You can now log this clip. Logging means that the in point and the out point are specifically saved 
for a clip that I want to digitize, in this case the tower clip, as I specified here. And now I'm ready to actually capture this clip by going to Capture and hitting the In to Out Capture button below it. The video camera will cue to the beginning, the in point that I set of the recording, and then it will record in real time from the beginning all the way to the end of the clip. At the end of the recording, the camera will stop automatically and your clip is digitized and can now be found in your scratch disk location that if you remember from the beginning of this section is set to the empty folder that you created uh, also at the very beginning of this workshop. I can now exit out of the capture window and I can find already in the project window the tower clip that I just digitized ready to be used in the final project. I can preview this clip by double clicking on it and then looking at it in the project window. I can scrub through it or just play it. I can turn the tower clip into a sequence that is then my starting point for exporting the project by taking it from the project window, grabbing it, dragging and dropping it onto the new item icon at the bottom of this window. This will create a new sequence with the exact settings of the clip in terms of frame rate, frame size and pixel aspect ratio. If you would like to do some further editing, you can use the razor tool to cut the clip into two parts, for example. Or you can again use the selection tool and go to the end of the clip, move the end point of the clip or the beginning of the clip, moving the in point of the clip, or you can grab the clip as a whole and move it anywhere you like in your timeline in the sequence window, for example placing it before or after a clip that you may already have in this timeline. It is now time to export this footage and again I need to make sure to select the uh, sequence window or the program window so that I actually export the sequence and not any media items that might be unedited or that might be unused in the project later on. I go to File, Export, Media and I also need to set the settings for my mini DV based footage so that I can successfully create a standalone video from that that can be uploaded to YouTube, Vimeo or that can be simply presented in class during the critiques. I start with the format and I keep the H.264 setting which is my MPEG-4 compressor that results in a very nice image quality and at the same time keeps the file size small and manageable. I need to provide an output name for the clip so I call this one video underscore one underscore final. I save it in the same location as my source files, the empty folder that I created in the beginning of this workshop, and I can now look at the video and audio settings for that clip. The size of this window is 720 by 480 pixels, however it gets tricky because these pixels are not square pixels, like I've seen with the SD card based footage, the HD footage in the first part of this workshop, but they are D1 DV NTC widescreen based pixels that have a slightly skewed aspect ratio to them. I should correct for that by unchecking this, setting the pixels to square pixels, which will temporarily rescale my image. And I also need to correct the image size 
in my width and height to 853 for 16 by 9 widescreen footage. Make sure to uncheck the proportional scaling here because you have to stretch the footage out again to compensate for the square pixel aspect ratio. Or if you have 4 by 3 footage, you need to choose a width of 720 and a height of 540 pixels here to get that aspect ratio. You can further on scroll down now to the bitrate settings. I choose the variable bitrate 2-pass setting here. Since this is now a much smaller frame size than I had before with the HD footage, it's actually enough to choose a target bitrate of around 8 or 7 and a maximum bitrate of around 10 megabits per second. The audio settings should stay the same as for the uh, SD based footage, the HD uh, 1080i or 1080p footage. The audio format should be AAC with an audio codec called AAC 48 kHz, 48,000 Hz sample rate stereo channels, a high audio quality, and a bitrate setting of 320 kilobits per second. I am now ready to export this footage as well. So all that is left to do is to hit the export button and to wait for the final result of this video creation process. Here we go. The video was successfully created. I can now hide the Premiere Pro software, go to the Video 1 folder and double check that it was successfully created in this folder. And then using the spacebar again, after I click on it and select it in the Finder, I am able to preview it in the Finder of the Mac OS operating system. This is the end of today's workshop that guided you through some basic principles of digitizing footage from mini DV based camcorders and SD based camcorders into Adobe Premiere, performing some basic edits and finally exporting the footage in form of an MPEG-4 video file.